In section 2 of the course, we're going to explore the difference between play mode and edit mode in more depth. We'll see how we can use Mono Develop to debug our application and find errors, as well as how we can optimize our program. In this video, we're going to take a look at the distinction between play mode and edit mode, and we'll also take a look at play mode tint, which can be used to help us identify the difference between the two modes. In this video, I want to consider the debugging process. That is, I want to start looking at ways in which we can find, trace, and correct problems that are detected in our game during gameplay. In front of me here, I have the standard assets project open here inside Unity, which can be downloaded for free from the Unity Asset Store. It contains many different projects inside the scenes folder here, many different scenes, and many different games. Right now I have the car game open. If I press play on the toolbar, I can take the car for a test drive around the racetrack. Now one of the first features that I want to have a look at for debugging games inside Unity is that during playback you do have the ability to pause the game. And even while the game is paused, you can switch for example to the scene tab and you can locate and find objects inside the scene. So for example, here is the car. I can select the car in the hierarchy panel, and with the car selected, I can still change and adjust and view all of its properties, even during play mode. So for example, I can move the car to a different location. In fact, if I move the game tab and the scene tab side by side here, it's probably better to kind of see how this is showing up here. I can move the car around. For example, I can move it over here. I can unpause the game and the camera moves back to where the car is located. In fact, even while the game is still running, even when we're not inside pause mode, I can still shift the car back to an earlier point and move the car around as though I was editing the scene while the game is running. This is a really great feature because I can tweak any of these values and try them out during gameplay mode to in fact sculpt the gameplay directly from the object inspector. That is a really great feature because we can test out different values and see how they play out. However, the important thing to keep in mind is that as soon as play mode ends, all the values and settings that we've specified in the object inspector will be reset back to what they were before play mode began. Now, this is a really important and useful feature, but it can sometimes be annoying for people approaching debugging for the first time. During play mode, if we start to edit the settings, we may think that we're making long-lasting changes, but all of those settings will be undone when play mode ends. So the idea or the advice to follow here is if you want to make lasting changes to your level and to the properties of objects, always do that during edit mode and never during play mode. The only time you want to change settings during play mode is when you want to try out different values and see how they work. But sometimes, you can get tricked or get lost into determining whether you're in play mode or not. Sometimes you can press play mode, for example, on the toolbar, and then forget that you pressed that, and then start changing properties of objects here inside the scene, and then later when play mode ends, oh no, you've lost all the changes. So one really great way in which you can change the user interface to help you signpost whether you're inside play mode or not, is to use play mode tint, and I want to show you how we can access that. I'm going to go inside the Unity Editor and choose Unity and select Preferences. Again, on a Windows PC, you would choose Edit Preferences. This will give you access to the Preferences menu. And under the Colors tab, here for Play Mode Tint, I can change the color of the interface. So right now it's set to white, meaning that it's not going to change the colors at all. But I can click in the swatch here and pick a completely different color. So for example, I can choose this kind of dull green color, and then come out of the Play Mode Tint, and then press Play. And notice that when I do this, suddenly the whole shading of the interface changes to this light green. I can still access all the settings just as I could before. It's that only now the color of the interface has changed to signify that we are in play mode. This is a really helpful feature because by tinting the interface this color, it really indicates to you quite clearly that we are in play mode. If you want to make long lasting changes to the properties, don't do it right now. Instead, stop playback, wait till the interface is back to its default colors, and then make the changes. So this is really useful feature for debugging. It's the distinction between play mode and game mode, and how we can use play mode tint to help us signify visually which mode we're in.